Yeah, when I was on Netflix, I was in the top one, 100 of the reviewers. I would make a comment. I would say something about the film. And then I would um, make comments and then, then put it in my own way. And people liked them. And I moved right up the charts. My reviews were very well rated. And had a lot of friends. And a lot of the films I rated uh, got my ratings up. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it quit working like that. They changed the way Netflix worked. And I was very upset by it. To me, it was like they didn't want any competition for Facebook. So they got rid of uh, Netflix. That's the way it appeared to me. Because I think all those guys get together in a little room and, just, and have a plan. And they all work together, these corporate people. They're all a little family. They're a big club, and we ain't in it, to quote uh, George Carlin. Now, I knew a rich guy in San Francisco where I said that. He said, no, I'm in the club. So maybe. I think the guy was not in that big of a club, but he thought so. And that's the club that they beat you, the head, uh, beat, beat you in the head over with, I'm telling you. But in any case, who cares, you know? Those people in that club, they're all going to die, and their kids are going to die, and their cousins are dying. You know, we're all screwed, so I, I don't care. I don't care about politics. I, I, I'm going to talk about something important. Art. As my favorite philosophy, Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche said, art is greater than truth. A person's art is very important. Um... So he was, he was ultimately a humanist. And I don't know if I agree with him about that. I don't know if I'm a humanist, but uh, I think art's pretty damn important. And I sat down and I thought, what are the top 10 movies at this moment, in my opinion? A lot of lists out there. And I'm going to track them down 10 through 1. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the movies. And then they're going to start appearing from, obviously, I'm going to go 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way up. Number 10. Point Blank, directed by John Borman, starring Lee Marvin and Angie Dickinson, and a few other people you would know. Ker Kerman, um, Keenan Wynn was in it, Carol O'Connor, a couple of other f people that you recognize. Haunting film, I look forward to reviewing. Haunting, beautiful film, Raging Bull, number nine, with Robert De Niro playing a boxer, um, Jake LaMotta. Kathy Moriarty, shot in black and white. Very gripping, very powerful film about spousal abuse. Hard Times, number eight. Starring Charles Bronson, um, James Colburn, Struther Martin. Uh, in a film about poverty, deprivation, male bonding. Patent. A film about a war, a war hero, a warrior, a great general, has one of the most uh, singular, greatest performances ever in the history of films. Chinatown. This film deals directly with the conspiracy, uh, with the conspiracy makers. Mr. Cross, played very convincingly by uh, John Huston. Uh, um, I think it was Mason Cross. I think that's interesting, Mason Cross, who, who who stole all the water for Los Angeles and who did a conspiracy and killed people. Very gripping film. 2046. I saw this movie with my second wife, and she said it was no good, and I wanted to divorce her right after that because I realized she was a complete idiot because it's a very powerful film about uh, um, two people... Um, who had their, went their own way. It's about love, unrequited love. Um, it's about the future. It's about cities. It's about life, modern life. Yearning. Made by a, one of the greatest fil filmmakers alive today. Uh, Wong Kar Wai. And I have to say thank you to uh, Quentin Tarantino for introducing this. Uh, so that'd be number four. Number three, the good, the bad, the ugly. Quintessential film, great Western, great war movie. Uh, individual performances are just off the charts. Um, this film made Clint Eastwood what he is today. 
Eli Wallach stole the movie. Uh, Lee Van Cleef was just the most evil character ever. Yo Jimbo starring the great Tashiro Mifune. Interestingly enough, Yo Jimbo was copied by Sergio Leone in his first film in the Man with No Name trilogy. Uh, it was stolen directly. Uh, Mr. Kurosawa won a lawsuit. Um, interestingly enough, I don't have Seven Samurai on the list. I could only put one. I don't like to have more than one director. Um, I like Yojimbo because it was the first film where, um, not the first, but it represents um, Mr. Kurosawa's uh, later work where, how should I put it? Where people were not working together. They re represented his chaotic, apocalyptic films. And I would say this was a, an, apo uh, an apocalyptic, even though it was about 1860, it was, a, it was about an apocalypse. It was about a period of, of changing. And I think there was a lot of people who, who, who used the work. My number one film, and you may not have heard of it, was by Mr. Uh, Mr. Melville, a Frenchman. Um, Army of Shadows. It has a performance by, um, his name escapes me, but the leading man was a was actually an Italian. He's an Italian-looking gentleman, very masculine. He plays a member of the French underground battling the Nazis. I think it's very interesting that the Nazis referred to the French underground as terrorists in the film while they're torturing them. I mean, there's scenes of torture in the film. There's scenes of murder in the film where, uh, where a snitch... Is, is choked to death right there in his chair um, by two guys. I mean, it's very terrifying. It's very powerful. The ending is shocking even today. Um, it's a fantastic film. There's murder, direct hand-to-hand -hand combat murder in the film. It is a film about a modern life made in 1968. It's a must-see. It's in French. It's a it's it's an incredible film, um, yeah. I think I missed the Wild Bunch. I don't remember going over that. That's number six. I don't remember going over that. But yeah, I think I skipped over that. Uh, yeah, that is a male bonding par excellence. At the time it was made in 1969, there was more film shot on it than any film ever made. Mister Peckinpah who is from the same hometown as my first, as my second son, Nicholas. He's from Fresno. He, uh, he made a masterpiece. It's an elegy of the West. It's a film about the dawning of the modern era. And any of these films could have been number one, and any of them could have been number ten. They're all that good. I, I like them all. Okay. Here we go. We're going to start with Point Blank pretty soon. Bye.